We're living through exciting times for research into Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Several companies are now testing an approach that uses a man-made gene to replace the gene that's faulty in Duchenne, the dystrophin gene. This is known as gene transfer using microdystrophin, or more commonly, gene therapy. The early data looks very promising for gene therapy, but challenges do still exist in getting this treatment to the entire Duchenne population. Here, we explain what some of these challenges are and some potential solutions. The human body is made up of cells. Each cell contains a control center that holds our genes. Genes are made of DNA and they provide instructions for how to build proteins that make our bodies work. In healthy people, the dystrophin gene makes a protein called dystrophin, which is essential for muscle function and structure. It's the largest gene in the body. In Duchenne muscular dystrophy, the dystrophin gene is damaged by a mutation and is unable to make the protein dystrophin. The lack of this protein causes muscle cells to deteriorate and die. Well, what's really clever is that scientists have found a way to make a synthetic version of the dystrophin gene. Now, the dystrophin gene is huge. It's 2.3 million base pairs long. Um, but what scientists have done is to create a shorter version. It's called a microdystrophin. That, in turn, produces a protein, smaller protein, but it's still functional. And the beauty of this is that this will work, should work, for all patients with DMD, irrespective of their particular mutation. To get this new gene into the body, scientists use a virus known as an adeno-associated virus, or AAV for short. The scientists remove the virus's own unwanted genes and insert the new microdystrophin gene in their place. The virus then carries the microgene to the cells in the body. The hope is that this new dystrophin will create healthier muscle function and hugely reduce any further deterioration. And this approach should work for all patients with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, regardless of their mutation. However, because these viruses occur naturally, some patients may have become exposed to them already and will have developed a natural resistance to them called antibodies. If the body has these specific antibodies, they will find the virus and dispose of it. Patients with this resistance are said to have pre-existing antibodies. One of the greatest challenges of using viruses to deliver uh, genetic information is that patients may have pre-existing antibodies. So in effect, they will be resistant to the virus. So currently, those patients would not be able to have the genetic therapy because their, vi their, their antibodies would effectively reduce the impact or in fact stop it working altogether. But the really good thing is that pharmaceutical companies and research groups are working hard to try and overcome this problem. We hope this film has helped you to understand some of the issues surrounding gene therapy. And if you have any further questions, do please email us at info at Thank you very much for watching.